Okay, hi. Uh, welcome. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Uday Shah and the entire SKM team, I welcome you to today's session. And uh, the topic for today is wisdom of life. Okay, so as always, I will uh, request you to participate. Please share your views. Please tell me what do you think about today's topic? What do you think wisdom of life means? To you what do you understand by wisdom I am waiting for your uh, messages okay uh, Sunita ji saying knowing makes your actions more effective all right. Okay. Neetu ji saying knowledge. Preeti ji saying learning opportunities and lessons. All right. Very nice. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for participating. So, um, experience with respect to knowledge. Okay. Avni is saying experience. Okay. Very nice. So, what we want to do is we want to understand this distinction between knowledge and wisdom. That is the basic uh, concept that we want to understand uh, today while we explore this topic wisdom of life. So, I mean, you can share your opinion, you can share your thoughts about what is the difference between uh, wisdom and knowledge or knowledge and wisdom. So while you do that, I'm going to share this PPT with you. Um, this is on the basis of what Dr. Shah has guided me for today's session for how to approach this topic today, wisdom of life. Okay. So before we go into this slide, I think uh, we need to discuss this. Um, what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? So, uh, all right, uh, Preeti ji saying application of knowledge is wisdom, knowing when and where to share knowledge comes wisdom. Okay, perfect. I think this is the perfect answer. Uh, when we just know something uh, like bookish knowledge or textbookish knowledge or we have some information. So that information uh, we consider as knowledge. We read it somewhere, we heard it from somebody. Uh, we know about it. So we assume that is knowledge. But knowledge is not knowing. And that is the understanding that we wish to clarify today. So what is knowledge? Knowledge is the information that we have. But when we uh, test it, when we add our own experience to it, when we, um, you know, actually go through something like that some experience uh, bordering that knowledge around that knowledge when we actually apply it then it turns into wisdom but then what is the difference between experience and wisdom because every experience is not really wisdom so uh, the bad experiences you know help us gain wisdom so when we make those mistakes, when we um, uh, do the wrong things, the wrong experiences or bad experiences, not always our own, sometimes we can learn from others experiences also, they help us gain wisdom. But wisdom is not just limited to knowledge and experience, there is another dimension to it. In fact, there is a more important dimension to it. And uh, that is what we are going to explore today. Wisdom is the divine mind. So I don't know here in um, Avni, I think can guide me whether we have in the earlier sessions discussed about uh, this conscious mind, subconscious mind and the super conscious mind. I'm sure we must have. Um, so divine mind is the super conscious mind. That is the mind beyond the uh, 
beyond the mind which contains the knowledge beyond the mind which contains the thought so normally we have this limited understanding of what the mind is and um, our mind usually uh, when we refer to the mind what we are actually referring to is our brain so our brain has all this information has this uh, knowledge which we have accumulated over the years through uh, people through uh, books through our own experiences mind also has these thoughts uh, what should i do i should not do uh, the doubts that we have it is all the mind um, should i do this should i not do this the prejudices that we have the preferences that we have this is all what the mind is but when we are talking about wisdom it means that we are executing the information or the message not from the brain but from the mind and the mind here means the divine mind which is beyond the physical mind which is beyond the brain which is beyond the data center of our lives so what is the divine mind the divine mind is the super conscious mind the messages which come to us in the form of um, gut feelings the messages which come to us in the form of uh, um, sometimes even blessings sometime uh, indications uh, uh, the guidance that we receive it can be from an individual also it can be from a person also it can even be from a book but when it is a divine message it is it is coming from the divine mind you always feel it uh, you always perceive it you always receive it in a very different kind of way and i think everybody has experienced that on some level uh, some of us are able to identify it much better sometimes uh, we are not able to identify it much better but uh, there is always the divine mind which is at play when we are talking about wisdom so the messages from the divine mind when acted upon is wisdom now what is wisdom of life so basically wisdom leads us to comes from the divine mind but leads us to evolution okay so wisdom when acted upon how does it lead to evolution because what happens is that when we are doing something in our lives we are reacting uh, supposing let's take an example that uh, my son comes to me and uh, he tells me something that uh, irritates me or uh, pisses me off and i uh, re respond or i re rather react in a very angry manner in in a very angry tone i get irritated i get angry so this is obviously something which is not coming from the divine mind it is coming from the normal mind my mind gets agitated my body gets agitated i react but when it is coming from the divine mind it is from a higher conscience higher level of higher consciousness uh, a higher level of understanding so maybe i do not react in that uh, in the same way rather i respond to him so that is something which is coming from the divine mind that guidance that okay probably there is no point arguing probably there is no point um, getting angry about this probably there is no point being uh, irritated about this probably we can deal it with uh, a little differently probably more effectively in a compassionate manner um, rather than just getting angry about it maybe we can talk about it we can discuss it so this is something which is coming from the divine mind but how does the divine mind help in evolution it helps in evolution because when we listen to the divine mind when we are acting in accordance with the guidance received by the divine mind when we are acting according to wisdom we tend to break those patterns those loops those karmic blockages and move forward so the mistakes that we had been making in the past was primarily because we were operating from the mind now when we operate from wisdom we do not react in the same way rather we respond differently and that is why we are able to bring about that change in our behavior or in our action or in our thoughts and consequently we break that pattern and we learn our lesson and then we evolve so it's a very simple concept that you've been doing something wrong because you've been listening to the normal mind now when you're listening to the divine mind you're acting out of wisdom 
you break those patterns because you've learned your lesson what the universe is trying to teach you and you move on so basically what happens is you evolve you graduate you go to the next class you move to the from school to college that is what wisdom does so it helps drastically helps in our evolution and what happens when there is lack of wisdom when we don't operate out of wisdom obviously we operate again and again we make this we get this a sim, same circumstance or a similar circumstance we react in the same way and when we react in the same way we make the same mistakes and the pattern keeps on repeating and repeating one after the other after the other so basically we get stuck in a loop and that is definitely not wise so that is the crux of wisdom and wisdom of life so now wisdom of life is when this becomes a habit when every decision that we take is a consequence of the wisdom uh, is a step further to the wisdom that we have received to the guidance that we have received is a step further uh, or is an action in execution of the wisdom that we have received then slowly 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 i mean we do it for one thing then we do it for a couple of things then we do it for more things then slowly slowly it becomes our habit slowly slowly we start acting more out of wisdom and less out of our normal brain our what we normally call mind we start acting less out of our impulses or our thoughts or our prejudices and we act more on uh, out of divine guidance on basis of messages that we receive or on the basis of pure compassion or love or kindness i can understand that uh, we are all not there yet we will get very clear messages i also never get any messages but if you are operating out of a higher frequency out of uh, love out of compassion if you are um intention or if your inertia is because of uh, a higher vibration to help somebody uh, to forgive uh, to thank somebody to pay gratitude then obviously you are acting out of divine mind and uh, you're acting in accordance with the wisdom so when this becomes a habit when you continuously do it when this becomes part of you when you become wisdom you imbibe it to that extent to that core in your being you start seeing everything from god's eye from a independent perspective from a neutral perspective so you just observe you just you don't get involved in it you don't have prejudices you don't have preferences you just witness it uh, without getting involved without getting attached without taking sides whatever is going on in somebody else's life in your own life if you are having some problems if you are having some issues you just observe it and then you try to understand what your lesson is when you understand your lesson then you know what changes are you are required to make what transformation is required what modification is required what amendment is your is required whether you need to change your behavior whether you need to change your habits whether you need to change the people around you whatever is required to change when you execute it when you make that change you act out of wisdom and that is when you move to the next level and when you do it consistently one after the other after the other after the other you start seeing everything from an independent perspective from the perspective of oneness from the perspective of an independent unbiased observer and when you are only an observer you are almost like god neutral detached fair and uh, always evolving always progressing
So I don't know if any of you has seen the uh, latest lecture which uh, Dr. Shah delivered at Goregaon in Mumbai. I think it has just come up on uh, YouTube and also on Facebook. So I would recommend that you should go and see it. Uh, but I will just share one very important aspect of it which um, Dr. Shah talked about and uh, he compared uh, the situations in life or compared our situation with an atom, the nucleus, uh, with protons, electrons and photons. And just like there is a new, um, just like there is God who is neutral, there are neutrons, then there is, there are protons which are positive and then there is electron revolving around them which is almost like negative energy so negative energy is always surrounding the positive energy moving around it and therefore what we really need is the photons we need those light particles we need that light we need the blessings of our masters we need the love of the masters but most importantly what we need is the wisdom of our masters. Now, we may understand these masters uh, in the form of gurus, in the form of saints. We may understand them in the sense of our religious uh, heads. Uh, or we may understand them in the form of pure light, uh, white light or any other kind of light. The wisdom that comes from them, that is what we need to absorb. That is what we need to imbibe in ourselves. That is what we need to do. Something called quantum healing, which Dr. Shah talks about in his um, lecture and uh, uh, in his talk. And I, I really recommend that you should go and see it if you've not already seen it. So as we continue to increase these positive particles, as we continue to increase these photons in our life, by uh, positive thoughts, by pos good deeds, by healing, by meditation, by spiritual practices, by doing yoga, exercise, meditation, um, by doing karuna reiki, karuna healing, psychic surgery, these things by attending retreats, we in continuously increase these uh, photons, these white light particles in our system, in our body, in our aura. And then eventually what happens is that the wisdom starts to increase. So we take this uh, life, we take this birth and then we spend it uh, on increasing the number of photo, uh, uh, light particles in our life and then there is more light in our life, there is more wisdom in our life and our soul continues to evolve digitally step by step. Now what happens is, uh, I'm sure you must have played video games. Uh, in your childhood or you even play them right now uh, so you know that whenever we go from one level to the next level uh, it always gets more difficult it always gets tougher and one more thing that changes is that the speed of the game also changes so if you are used to those old games uh, where you go from one level to level two uh, if the game gets faster everything gets quicker um, and that is exactly what happens in our spiritual practice when we increase these positive particles. So the challenges also increase, but as the challenges increase, and if we continue to learn, continue to do our spiritual practice, the wisdom also increases. And the wisdom lets us quickly recognize our flaws. So now normally what happens is we are not willing to identify our own flaws and it takes, we are stuck in the same patterns for years together and uh, most of us unfortunately are born and die but uh, we hardly make any corrections or bring about major transformation in our lives and we practically end up wasting the entire life but what happens is when we increase these uh, light particles when we act out of wisdom we are able to identify our own flaws quicker and make amends quicker and then when we make amends quicker we are able to evolve faster we are able to accept ourselves faster we are able to forgive easily we are able to accept others easily uh, normally what happens is um, when wisdom increases or when we start spiritual practice uh, we get messages we get guidance and then we mistake it to be our own ability our own psychic ability our uh, own property 
and then some of us uh, after a little bit of evolution get stuck in the trap of commercialization of spiritual practices or spirituality so we become these uh, psychics who are trying to read somebody's future trying to give advice to somebody based upon that future upon the readings that they do nothing wrong with that um, the only problem is that uh, as a spiritual practitioner the primary task is to continue to evolve yourself continue to transform yourself continue to break your ego break your own patterns and continue to move forward but what happens is sometimes those people who get uh, involved in so called commercialization of spiritual practices too early instead of working on their evolution they are working more on making more money so they stop their own transformation they stop their own spiritual practice they stop focusing on transforming themselves rather they focus more on selling themselves and that is why this becomes a problem so we must remember that the wisdom that comes to us has to always be utilized one for a higher purpose for a spiritual purpose if we misuse this wisdom it disappears so it has happened to so many people we get there uh, but then we fall down again because we have not really learned our lesson because we we have not really realized uh the higher purpose behind our gifts or uh, the guidance that we have received we are not realizing uh, utilizing for a higher purpose or the best possible purpose so our mind again starts overtaking our uh, greed starts overtaking our uh, routine thoughts uh, starts overtaking our uh, wisdom and when we allow the brain to supersede the mind the divine mind when we allow the brain to take the final call uh start falling down and uh, we start uh, going backwards rather than going forwards and that is the challenge that we have to remain in this vibration of wisdom we have to continue to act out of wisdom we are all able to act out of wisdom once or twice in a month maybe or for uh, like a little more frequently maybe once or twice in a day but we are not able to maintain it we are not able to do each and every act out of wisdom and that is the challenge because our human mind our brain like i told you it keeps on interfering it doesn't like to be sidelined it has to poke itself again and again it has to stand out and you know make its presence felt um, it has to intervene in everything that you are trying to do including your meditations which is why what happens is when you are meditating you always have these random thoughts you always remember all the work that you have to finish while you are trying to meditate and um, all the important deadlines come to your mind only when you are trying to meditate simply because your mind is trying to interfere it's trying to tell you that no 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 don't go there don't listen to the divine mind please listen to me i am more important and that is exactly what keeps you from wisdom what keeps you from going forward so uh, just to summarize just to give you an overall holistic understanding of uh, what wisdom is and where it takes you or where it can take you is that wisdom leads to your evolution it leads to uh, a progressive um, increase a way forward a step forward in fact rather a leap forward uh, towards your evolution the evolution of your soul and uh, it's like this that when you are uh, working out of knowledge working out of data uh, you're working out of information when you're working from the divine mind you were working out of wisdom when you're able to maintain this wisdom you see everything just as an observer and you are able to do this continuously then these white particles keep on increasing in your body these light particles they keep on increasing in your body in your aura um in your akashic records everywhere now that is a different conversation and then what happens is that eventually it has to lead to light all around you inside you to the extent that you become a source of light and when you become a source of light we call that enlightenment 
so wisdom is your shortcut to enlightenment acting out of wisdom 24 7 is your shortcut to enlightenment and when you are able to stay enlightened continuously non-stop then you ultimately reach the infinite state or the final level or what we normally call as moksha or nirvana so you must understand that yes uh, nirvana is our target for all of us whether we understand it or not whether we accept it or not at this stage or um, if that is not your target for now that is absolutely fine but you must understand that wisdom is the way forward wisdom is what is going to take you to the next step wisdom is what is going to take you where you need to be and that is what is the wisdom of life so i hope i have been able to effectively communicate and put across what sir wanted me to do uh, if you have any doubts please you can text them in the chat box if they are related to today's discussion i will try to answer them and now it is time for us to dive into this meditation this experiment part that we do where we are going to take in those light photons into our body into our aura into our being and we are going to take a sankalp we are going to um, you know build this intention to continue to act out of wisdom in each and every moment of our life so i hope it's going to be interesting and enjoyable for all of you uh, so we'll take a quick break uh, i'll go and get some water maybe you can take a washroom break or something and then we can continue this in another two three minutes we will start with the meditation meanwhile if you have any questions please text them in the chat box i'll see you in the next two three minutes thank you If you are ready, please text in the chat box so we can start with the meditation.
थैंक यू जूली थैंक यू अंजना ओके थैंक यू डॉली जी लेट्स स्टार्ट नाउ विद द मेडिटेशन सो प्लीज टेक अ कंफर्टेबल पॉस्चर एनी काइंड ऑफ पॉस्चर दैट यू लाइक यू कैन सिट ऑन द ग्राउंड और ऑन अ चेयर और वेर एवर यू लाइक close your eyes and just focus on your breath just begin by noticing the sensations in your physical body notice any any places where you feel a little bit of tightness which feels uncomfortable or you feel a little bit of pain or irritation or maybe an itch and just try to slowly breathe into that part of your body now for example your lower back is hurting so just visualize that your breath is going down into your lower back healing that lower back and all the black energy dark energy energy of pain stress is flowing out with your exhale and notice how your body begins to relax more and more and more as you continue to listen to the sound of my voice you find yourself relaxing even more letting go of all stress tension anxiety now i invite you to just put aside all that stress all those thoughts just for the duration of this session for the next 20 25 minutes and then after that if you need anything i'm sure you can always go back to those thoughts so for now we will just focus inward focusing on our breathing our inhalation our exhalation notice the temperature of your breath is the inhalation warmer or is it the exhalation which is warmer notice how your body begins to loosen up now becoming more and more relaxed as it continues to go deeper and deeper and deeper going into an even deeper state of trance now just relaxing completely focus your attention bring your awareness to your heart center to your anahat chakra which is a green colored chakra located just adjacent to your physical heart right in the center at the level of your physical heart feel your heart center expand visualize this green colored heart center fill up with love and light see that green healing light flowing outwards from your heart relaxing you even more 
is you begin to feel that vibration of love, of compassion, which your heart chakra continues to expand more and more and more. Feel that expansion in your chest. Feel the love, feel the guidance. Now from the core of your heart, call upon your masters, invoke them. You can even visualize them in whatever form you worship them, whatever form you recognize them. Call upon your masters, gurus, guides, call upon those angels and archangels, guardian angels. Ishwar, Isht, invoke all of them. Visualize this divine light coming from the universe, penetrating your crown chakra, which is located at the top of your head, flowing down into your body now. Flowing down deep inside your body, this divine light. This divine light is this pure light coming from your masters, from your guru, from your Ishwar, flowing in the form of light. It's carrying their blessings. It carries their love. And above all, it carries their wisdom. Visualize this light penetrate into each cell, each muscle, each tissue, into every inch of every bone in your body. Visualize this white light soaking every inch of your body, every cell, spreading right across your body from the top of your head into your forehead, your eyes, your nose, relaxing that face, your lips, your chin, moving back, relaxing your ears, your neck, feeling so relaxed. Moving down further, relaxing all those muscles in your neck, lengthening your vertebra, your spine. Feel that relaxation as this divine light enters into your shoulders, relaxing your shoulders. Visualize this white light flowing into your left shoulder your left arm, upper arm, elbow, your forearm, your palms flowing out. Now focus your attention on your right shoulder. See how this divine potent white light flows down your right shoulder into your right arm, your elbow, your forearm, your palm flowing out again. Filling your entire body with this divine white light. Your entire body is filled with the divine light. See your abdominal cavity being filled with this divine light. Your chest, your upper back. See your stomach in your back. See how this light fills your lower back. Visualize it flowing down into your pelvic region and collecting there is a ball of divine white light. Getting more and more potent. Filling up your entire pelvic region, relaxing your genitals. 
and slowly moving down your left thigh, relaxing your thighs now, your upper thigh, your lower thigh, your inner thigh and your outer thigh, relaxing everything. Flowing down, relaxing your left knee. Even down, relaxing your calves. And then the left ankle. The left foot. Flowing out of your left toe, this divine white light has completely filled your left leg. And notice how it now begins to flow down into your right thigh. Relaxing your right thigh. Flowing down into the right knee, into the right calf. Down into the right foot and the right toes. From top to bottom, each and every part of your body is filled with this divine white light. Feel the flow of this divine, potent light through your body. Feel the blessings from your masters. Feel their love. Feel the connection with the divine. Feel it inside you. Feel your Guru, your Master, your Bhagwan inside you. As we speak, this white light is transforming your body. This light is penetrating into each cell. Healing your cells, repairing your cells, your organs, your tissues. But above all, this white light is carrying within it the wisdom from the masters, from the gods, goddesses, from the devta. As this wisdom flows into your body, into your aura, each and every cell of your body is getting transformed. Each and every cell is healing. You can even visualize this white light penetrating deep inside the cell, into your DNA. Healing your DNA. Visualize it, activating your DNA. All the 12 strands of your DNA are completely activated now. Your super genes are activated. Your super conscious mind is now being activated. You don't have to do anything, you just have to allow this. This process is being done by your masters, by your gurus. Your only job is to allow it to happen. To be willing. And therefore now surrender completely. Completely surrender to the Divine Light. Feel the flow of this Divine Light inside your body and your aura. As it rinses you, as it removes all the dark particles, as it fills up your body, your aura with Divine White Light. This wisdom is now being installed, is being downloaded into each cell 
each muscle, each tissue, each organ of your body into your aura. into the core of your being. The wisdom that this light carries is being absorbed by every inch of your body and your aura. You may even feel gratitude for your masters. You may want to thank them for their healing, for their blessings. Just allow this to happen. Even if you cannot feel anything, even if you cannot visualize anything, that is also okay. The process is automatic. You just have to indicate your intention, your willingness. As each and every cell of your body is now being upgraded, as your DNA is now being activated, feel yourself as this divine being of light. The essence of who you really are. And now bringing your awareness to the core of your heart, to your Anahat Chakra. Visualize yourself operating out of this wisdom. In your mind's eye, visualize yourself with those same patterns reappearing in your life. But this time, instead of reacting, you are responding. You are first listening to the divine wisdom, to the divine messages. Bring your attention to the brow chakra or your third eye chakra, situated in between your eyebrows. And allow this light to activate your crown chakra. If you are a healer, allow the divine symbols to activate your brow chakra. And now feel the connection with the divine mind. Feel the connection with the higher consciousness and now download the wisdom. You may visualize this as a potent streak of white light flowing down from the universe through your crown into your third eye chakra. This divine white light is downloading and activating the wisdom within you. And now observe yourself doing the same tasks, but how you now act differently, how you respond instead of reacting. How you deal differently with the same situation. Notice now how you are able to easily recognize your own lessons. You are able to easily recognize what part of your life requires transformation. Correction. You easily recognize your own mistakes.
you easily learn from them and correct yourself. Maybe you can even recognize others' mistakes. But instead of trying to correct others, you accept them as it is. You accept them for who they are. Without judgment. And after making these amends, after making these changes, after bringing about your transformation, you evolve into the next step, into the next lesson, into the next soul level. As you bring your attention to your heart center once again, put forth the intention. Take this sankalp. I promise myself that from now onwards, 24 7, in whatever I do, I will act out of wisdom. I will act out of higher consciousness. I promise I will not allow my human mind or my brain to overtake my divine mind. I shall forever be guided by my divine mind. I promise that each and every step that I take, each and every breath that I take, every action, every reaction, every response, everything I do will be guided by wisdom. Everything that I do will be guided by the light, by the masters. And see the transformation this brings about in your life. Slowly, how happy you become. That feeling of inner joy, of inner bliss, which you had been searching for is finally here, finally there for you to experience. See how acting out of wisdom for days and months and even years has transformed you completely now. Your entire body, entire aura is filled only with light. So much so that you yourself have become a source of light. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you are always radiating love and light into the universe. Feel this. Feel your heart chakra expand to its infinite capacity to its full potential as you continue to serve as light and love, being guided by the light in everything. Always willing to transform. You are the light. You are love. Feel this. Experience this. And now allow this feeling to settle deep into the core of your heart. Allow it to sink in. 
deep into the being, into the core of who you are. Maybe you feel deep gratitude for your masters, for your gurus. Thank them for this day. Thank them for the light they gave you. Thank them for their wisdom. And congratulate yourself for having made this promise to yourself. For acting out of wisdom. Thank all the co-participants in today's session with whose collective energy we have been able to achieve this deep state. Thank our master Dr. Odesha for his guidance and his divine presence. Thank your own soul for the evolution, for the transformation, for the willingness to change. With a feeling of deep gratitude, slowly bring your awareness back to your breath. Slowly beginning to notice the inflow and the outflow of the breath. the temperature of your breath. Bring your awareness back to your physical body. Notice the sensations in your body. The room's temperature. Any sounds in the room. Slowly move your toes your hands, your fingers. Rub your hands together and then cup them on your eyes. And open your eyes. Allow the energy from the palms to be absorbed deep into your body through your eyes. Absorbing it completely now. With a feeling of deep gratitude, Whenever you think you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Thank you for joining today. On behalf of Dr. Udesha and the entire Sai Karuna Mission team, I express my gratitude to all of you for joining today for this collective energy that we created. And uh, I will see you sometime next month. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Have a nice day. And always keep smiling.